Discord. All right, everybody, welcome. We are recording. And let me share my lovely slides with you. I'm so happy to have you here and that you're here with me. And I'm just going to change my screen around so I can see you. We have, I believe, in this setup, the chat and the Q&A function in the bottom. So if you have private questions that you just want me to see, you can drop those in the Q&A. Otherwise, please drop them for everyone to see. As I was just saying, I recognize a lot of you registering for this webinar. It's so exciting to see your names. I would love to see your faces. Last time we had too many people. Uh, I have a max of 500 in my Zoom room and we had too many people register. So I was like, oh, I'll just do webinar, but we've got a more intimate group this time. So I wish I had done the Zoom. Ah, do, do, do. <laughs> next time. So we'll keep going back and forth. But good news is this is recorded. So you might be watching the recording or you might need to hop off and come back and this will be here for you. All right. So this is moving beyond trauma. <laughs> Really something that I was inspired to share with you moving into 2023. My name is Lisa Danilchuk. For those of you who don't know me, I'm the founder of the Center uh, for Yoga and Trauma Recovery in Oakland, California. I've written a few books and like I said, we're recording. So you've got that backup. If there's any weird storms or tech snafus, we'll just let it be and know we have a backup. All right. So it's super nice to meet you. For those of you I haven't met before in person in 3D, I am a licensed marriage and family therapist here in California. I've also been an experienced registered yoga teacher and a certified yoga therapist for a long, long time, about 20 years. And I'm the founder of the Center for Yoga and Trauma Recovery, which is an organization dedicated really to educating yoga teachers, mental health professionals, wellness professionals in trauma-informed yoga and in yoga-informed therapy or yoga-informed trauma work. I also just finished being president of the International Society for the Study of Trauma and Dissociation. I know some of you in here are members. And thank you for those of you who are volunteers as well, uh, because I led this organization for all of 2022 and I learned so much. I'm still digesting all of it. Some of it I'm going to share here with you today. But leading an organization of almost 2,000 members internationally who are all working in the trauma world and the trauma field, especially at this point in time, um, was an exercise and was a, a really deep learning experience. So I'm hoping to share some of that um, wisdom with you here today. I'm also a student from UCLA. Originally, I once went to a Harvard football game and wore my UCLA sweatshirt because that's where I identify the most. Um, and I did my master's and graduate counseling work at Harvard. So as a student, and I've also um, taught there as a guest teacher and as a teaching fellow. Also written three books. Uh, most recent is Yoga for Trauma Recovery, Theory, Philosophy, and Practice by Rutledge. Came out in 2019 and on Audible just came out last year, so you can listen. But I will be giving away at least one of those books at the end of this for those of you who stick around. So something to look forward to. I'd love to know, and I know, I know how the world works. I know some of you are like in another Zoom meeting or on the road or, you know, you're living and you might have kids or dogs chewing on you. I get it. But I'd love to hear from you in this moment in the chat. Like, where are you coming from? Can you let us know what state if you're in the U.S. or what country if you're outside of the U.S. You could just go to the little chat function and pop it in there. And then I'd love to know how are you feeling these days? Are you feeling tired? Are you feeling inspired? Are you feeling, I don't know, hopeful, chaotic, downtrodden? Fill in the blank with any anything that comes to mind. I see some hearts. Uh, oh, chat is disabled. Thank you for letting me know that. Why don't you just pop it in the Q&A? Because honestly, if I try to fix that right now, I'll probably shut down the whole webinar. Thank you, Viviana, for letting me know. Viviana. Um, so if you pop it in the q and I'll see it and I'll just read it off without your name. So if you could go down to the Q&A box, let us know where you're joining from and how you're feeling these days. Okay, so we've got California. Hey, uh, North Carolina. Nice. Canada. Uh, Biddleford, Maine. Sarah, hi. Steady but tired, right? Okay, I get that. Denver, Colorado. Tired. Canada. North Carolina again, San Antonio, Texas, feeling great. Soggy Central California, right? 
It is wet here. It is flooded in so many places. Utah, feeling overwhelmed. Past traumas coming to show themselves in parenting. Ugh, yes, worried my traumas will spill over to my kiddo. It, just the fact that you're thinking about that will happen is super helpful, right? New York, New York, feeling grounded and hopeful. Alex from Castro Valley, Boomy's crying. Oh, Boomy wants to chew on my heel while I'm working. Mexico, anxious and weird, but glad to be here or wired, overwhelmed, feeling good, uncertain, but inspired. So there's quite a mix in here, right? Uh, there's a lot going on. We're in a lot of different places in the world. The weather is impacting us, the time of year. Uh, I would guess, and we'll talk about this, some of the trauma and things that have been happening in the world. Hi, Carrie. Uh, let's see, we've got Carol from Mansfield, Ohio. Sorry, I said I wouldn't see your name, say your names. So I'm saying your first names. So apologies for that. Uh, feeling great. Holidays were a little rough. That was another one, but feeling renewed over the last few days. <sighs> okay, we got Little Rock, Arkansas. Happy to be connected to all of you. Yes, this is a good group of people. Uh, I always draw inspiration from that. So thank you all, seriously, for being here and for being who you are. Um, and I'm seeing a mix. I'm seeing a little more on the tired side. I'm seeing some inspiration. I'm seeing some great feelings. Um, and I think this is a great place to be in this little... I think be a helpful and centering conversation for you today. Now, if you've been in any of my teachings or webinars before, you might know I like to like collect information and then just download it. And today we'll touch on some information, but I want this to be a little more process oriented for you. I'm hoping you'll walk away really feeling a little more of that support and inspiration and feeling some of the things, um, uh, the ways that I've learned to work through hard things, especially in this last year, uh, being president of ISSTD feeling some of that centeredness, resolution, lightness. I know, man, when stuff comes at us, whether it's trauma being triggered from parenting or, you know, flooding in your garage, or it, it can just get clouded and overwhelming. And sometimes it's hard to stay connected. Some of you are, are staying connected to that inspiration. And so you're struggling with that. I <laughs> ask me any given day, some days I'm connected to it. Some days it's challenging. So I'm really hoping that this process and this time together will help you move through that. I'm also really hoping to end before the hour. So you have transition time, um, just FYI, but you know, I tend to go over. So I schedule 45 minutes for, for my brain that will go. Uh, we might go a little over under that, but it will be what it will be. So thank you so much for joining. I'm gonna invite you to just practice as we do dharana or single pointed focus, right? So bringing your attention to this moment, to this exercise. I've been doing a few New Year's meditation challenges and things and I have two going in the morning and I'll start one and I'll do the other. And then sometimes I'll just get distracted during one of them, you know, I'll be like, oh, there was a ding, let me check that. And then I'll have to rewind because I didn't get what the, the Dalai Lama was saying. I didn't get, you know, this pearl of wisdom. So yes, this is recorded. If you have a big interruption, it's fine. Don't worry about it. But let's do the practice. Let's try to minimize interruptions. If you want to turn your phone to silent, I'm going to do that right now. Yes, it's off. Minimize tabs or pop-ups, things like that. If you can go full screen, turn your volume up. I think that'll help. And we just do that practice of being here now, right? We're training our brain to pay attention to what's in front of us and be engaged and involved with what's happening um, as a way to continue to move through life, right? There's always flavors of that, but we'll be here now together. And this is what we're gonna cover. Okay, so I always wanna come in with a plan and have an idea of what we're going through. I'm gonna cover three central kind of steps, processes to help us move through trauma when we're feeling stuck. When I'm talking about trauma right now, I'm talking about this larger cloud of um, collective trauma. So I'll differentiate a little bit, but I know some of you are in here really interested in yourselves and your own lives. I mean, we're all human. We're all gonna be processing our own lives as we go. Uh, but there's also just this larger, you know, moving through a pandemic and so many of the social justice issues, especially here in the States that have been going on. So I'm speaking a little more to the larger sense, especially again, coming from that just being president of the international organization, but I think it applies on both stances, right? But definitely if you're working with something really specific, you know, even as you're a therapist, get that therapeutic support for yourself. It's so valuable. So I'll talk about differentiating the trauma vortex and the healing vortex. Some simple steps we can take to make positive shifts in our energy. 
and how we can center ourselves so we can lead when there's these collective challenges and traumas that we're steeped in. And then gift for you at the end, a giveaway book. I always like to start any conversation that's going to talk about resource, that's going to talk about trauma with resourcing. Okay, so let's take a moment right now. Hopefully you're in a neutral or even positive environment. There's something positive about your environment. I dig this cozy sweater. It's one of my favorite, favorite things. Alex got it for me for anniversary end of last year, and it makes me feel happy. So it could be as simple as that, like, oh, I love my sweater, or oh, I've got this cup of coffee or tea, or uh, there's a beautiful plant. Uh, there's a lemon tree I can see out my window. Take a moment in your environment just to connect with even one thing that makes you feel supported, that makes you feel connected to this moment. Maybe it's something that carries beauty or meaning or significance for you. It could be visual, auditory, felt, could be petting your dog. They're usually right about here. <laughs> and take a moment to just let that come to life. So for me, nature is really resourcing. So I often use the photos of nature, like a sunset or, you know, flowers. Um, that might work for you, it might not. But notice something right now and take a moment to take it in. What does it look like? What does it smell like? What does it feel like? Can you connect with it? And just know, we're going to talk a little about trauma today. I'm not going to go into any, you know, narratives that are triggering in particular or anything like that, but just talking about it, it might help to just keep coming back to this. I have so many beverages, <laughs> tasty lemon water lemon, from the lemon tree outside, right? It, it might be nice to come back to something neutral or positive. So we start from there. And then I want to move into a short exercise. I want to invite you to take a minute right now, just one little minute. And I know there's so many demands on your time that one minute could easily be like, oh, I should just go change the laundry really quick, or, oh, I should do this or that. So as much as you can stay with this, it's a simple, simple practice. Cognitively, it seems really easy, but just allowing yourself to lean into and imagine for you, for your community, for the people around you, what is healing or what is healed look like? Okay. Now I know you're all in different environments. You might be sitting at a desk, driving a car, perhaps even outside. We're in different places in the world. So in this minute, I'm going to play a short little song for you. One that happens to be very meaningful for me that hopefully, hopefully you enjoy too. Uh, I'm going to play a song and I'm going to invite you just to ponder, to let your mind go with what is healed look and feel like. You could write, you could draw, you could text yourself or make a note in your phone. I know it's more tech coming in, but you know, you can use whatever is in your environment right now to support you in exploring this. So we've got this one, one minute and 11 second song and I'm gonna do it with you. I'm gonna draw. So what is healed look or feel like? If you get stuck, you can go back to your healing looks like, feeling looks like, and just fill in the blanks. Take a few easy breaths if that helps you. You might go big, you might go small, worldwide, within your home. I'll just share, and if you want to put in the Q&A box anything that came to your mind, um, I'll read it out. So for me, healing looks like love, looks like rest, looks like connection, looks like snuggling puppies, looks like, it, this one's funny, it just came to me, airline travel without emissions, peace between nations, right? So going kind of big here and, um, and general. From there, next question. 
is just what would you like to experience more of in the world? So this is probably going to be more your emotional experience. Um, perhaps you go out and it's raining and there's traffic and people are tense, so you'd like to experience more calm. Perhaps um, you'd like to experience more connection with people. Or you're feeling distant or isolated or right. So just again, one more moment. I'm gonna play the same song. My brother Matt recorded this like 20 years ago. I'm gonna play the same song and just ask yourself, what would you like more of? What emotion, what experience would you like more of today, right now, at this point in time? One more moment here. We can come back to that prompt. I would like more. All right, so any comments? Oh, you can't hear the song. <laughs> I'll send it to you. It's really the podcast song if you listen to the How We Can Heal podcast. It's, um, uh, sorry, I'm not super audio tech. Uh, that my brother got all those jeans. Uh, but I was just playing it from my phone in the background. It's just a little guitar riff and it's the audio for the How We Can Heal podcast, um, if you can imagine that. So. So what would you like to experience more of in this world? I, I'm confident nobody's going to say trauma. <laughs> Peace, okay. Collaboration, yes. Uh, spaces for rest and reflection, 100% agree. I don't know. It's hard to think about. Yeah, sometimes it's challenging, right? Like, what do I want more of? Uh, I want less of things, right? less drama. All right, anything else? Just pop it in the Q&A. Connection, understanding, empathy, compassion, connection. Hi, Alicia. <laughs> yay, you're here. Awesome. I would like more moments like that. Like, yay, you're here. Um, I was listening to uh, Michelle Obama's most recent audio book, and she talks about gladness, about just like, uh, she tells a story about a friend's husband who wakes up in the morning and goes, hey, buddy, in the mirror. I don't know if any of you have, have listened to this, but that gladness we have upon seeing each other. Um, yeah, definitely. So there's a theme here of like connection, understanding, unity, uh, reflection and rest peace like a little more uh, one of the words I wrote down too was cohesion like but also this honoring of uniqueness at the same time so that's something that stands out for me um, collectively okay we've got more clarity on ways to connect effectively and efficiently connection joy integration calm decluttered space. I will not turn my camera this way. Actually, I will. You can see I have boxes of boxes. Well, it's kind of hard. I can't turn it much more, but I have boxes that I just took everything out of the closet. Now it's all in the middle of the room. So eventually the decluttered space will happen. Trust, kindness, personal joy, and making more positive memories with my family. Yes. Compassion, love, universal love, the universe, stability, justice, coherence, belonging, happiness. Yes, yes, yes to all of this. So I'm just going to ask you now how it feels to be connected to some of these words. Right? Sometimes we just get a taste of them. We get a little bit of a, a vision. And I don't know how specific your last moment when you couldn't hear the music was, but 
when we think of what we do want, you know, and this is like really common in sort of spiritual manifesting circles and things like that. But I think it's actually really important that we're orienting to something, especially amidst trauma, right? That even when there's an interruption, like well, we call our little Roomba vacuum cleaner, Ufi, Ufi's beeping over there. <laughs> when Ufi beeps, like I'm oriented to you all and I'm, I'm excited to hear and learn from you. So we come back to that thing that's important to us, right? I think that's really important in trauma work. And what I'm gonna encourage you to do now is to drop an anchor. Um, images just from a, a wedding. Look at all the love we found, right? We can anchor ourselves in these words that you've posted in the Q&A, um, that you've maybe written to yourself or said to yourself out loud or in your mind. So let's just choose one to three aspects of your vision to anchor you, how you want to feel, how what healed looks like, you know, where you'd like to go. And that might be a word or a short phrase. So it could be connection. That one came up a lot. It could be um, rest or reflection. Those came up as well. Um, happiness or joy. So <clears throat> one, if there's two or three, great. Once we get more than that, our brains get you know a little bit distracted or overwhelmed. If you can manage five, great. But something that you can come back to that feels centering here. And if you're in a place where you can, I encourage you to write it down, sketch it out, you know, make a note to yourself. We can use these while we're making choices, right? While we're communicating. And this is something I used a lot as president of ISSTD, right? I have a duty to do what's in the best interest of ISSTD. Coming back to that, right? Coming back to, okay, what does resolution look like in this? And we can use these words of how we want it to feel on the other side while we're communicating. Okay, well, so I'll come back to this, but get your word, one, two, three, however many you want. Get that as clear as you can now. And if it's just not landing, just trust that it'll come, okay? And it's time. So when we're doing trauma work, and many of you in here are therapists, social workers, it's really important to start by identifying where we are. So let's start with <laughs> where we are in time and space. January, 2023, um, a common question early pandemic was like, is this traumatic? And easy answer was yes, there's a lot, a lot involved in this that we could, we could experience as traumatic. So what's traumatic these days? When we look at PTSD as a diagnosis, I know diagnosis, that's a whole other conversation, is imperfect, is evolving, but I think there's a nugget in here that's important, which is <clears throat> there's a brush with death or threatened death or violence or harm. Um, my love, if you are watching and you could come take care of Ophi, I think that's a need. Thank you. <laughs> so funny. So PTSD usually starts with some sort of brush with like violence, threat, death. And we can talk about neglect as another category because some of you are probably thinking that. Um, he's on the charger, so I don't know what the deal is. I want to make a point that since we're a social species, even being excluded from something can be a threat. So we've seen a lot of this coming up in the collective where people are talking about being excluded from a group, being oppressed, um, being in a social structure that's unjust. And people ask, well, is that traumatic? Or what about uh, socioeconomic trauma or racial trauma or ethnic trauma? Well, think about it. If we go back in our history and we were in a small group, maybe hunter-gatherer, or maybe living in a certain spot, if we were excluded from the group, that would put us at really life or death risk because we're interdependent and we depend on each other for so many of our needs to be met, even just our basic physiological needs and our social needs. Like we actually need people to, to different degrees. We need people to kind of feel good and, and, and feel connected, to feel some of those things we talked about, right? Connection, joy, moments with family. These things are important. So some of the things that can be traumatic are a presence, like some brush with death. COVID's a great example. All of a sudden, anywhere you go, you might get a disease that could kill you or people you love. Like that's a threat, right? That's a serious threat. That's threatened death. Um, there's also a lot of experiences out there of threatened violence or real violence or harm. And again, we've been digesting these a lot in social media, in the media, and just in our communities. So the exclusion, and I would also say that the isolation piece could kind of go with even biologically the exclusion piece. So if we're isolated and there's threat out there, like this can start to lead to responses to trauma that come up in our body. Um, we're uprooting a lot. And what I see is 
just a lot of processing happening individually and collectively. Part of that could be we stay at home more, we sit with stuff. Um, part of that could be, I don't know, I'm not an astrologer, but the moving of the stars and the changing of times, but it's happening, right? And I think we can all agree, drop me a note in the Q&A if you disagree, that there's a lot of collective trauma and a lot of personal trauma that we're processing right now in this time. Just to flash back to this um, graphic from 2020, where the relative importance of things, we were kind of joking by April of like, oh, I don't need to shave or wear, you know, I'm wearing sweatpants all the time. But the importance now of connection, right, of <clears throat> being able to feel a part of a community and be seen and heard and included, like there are these things, uh, these needs that have been under the surface that are coming up and out. And I think they've just been amplifying since uh, 2020. And we could even look at, you know, events that have happened before, particularly here in the US, that have led us on this trajectory of processing a lot of trauma. So what I've seen, uh, I've been supporting people, most of my clients in private practice, I've been seeing for a long time now, 10 years or so, or more. Um, and what when personal healing, when we're tracking personal healing, we tend to see um, moments of like this growth, like some of you were sharing, feeling inspired or feeling like great or, you know, feeling some momentum in your healing. For both therapists and client, that tends to feel really generative. I love that word generative, like something's happening here. You might be sad and cry in one session, but the next session, something shifted, right? So what I've seen in that track as I'm witnessing personal healing over years is that we can have those moments where even when it's hard, there's a sense of like, oh, I'm really digesting something here. I made an important decision. It was really sticky. It was really difficult. But on the other side of it, I feel easier. I feel lighter. I feel a relief or a release. And the other thing we can see in, which I'll talk about a little bit more in a moment, in, in this sort of tracking things from a therapist standpoint, many of you have been in, in this seat, is something we call looping, right? Like getting stuck in things. So we'll come back to that in a moment. Uh, so I've been witnessing these personal healing and really in depth with, you know, a handful of individuals for a long time, um, collective healing, how it shows up in organizations and really how it shows up on social media because we've been a little less in-person connected over the fluctuations of COVID, right? We, I think, depend a little bit more on social media to create this sense of our group. We're maybe not in the office anymore, or we're maybe, you know, we're working remote. And so there's a little more of a um, disbursement in our sense of community. It's maybe if you're still like in school or in college or in a really tight knit, -knit community, uh, work-wise, you feel this, but it's kind of a dispersion. And then our social media becomes our sense of community. And there's a lot of processing happening on social media. I know we all have different feeds and they're all sort of responsive to what we click on, but that's what I see. And a lot of times I'll have to go, okay, that's enough. I've got to log out because I'll log in and I'll be like, oh, sweet little kitten. Oh, this person died. Oh, this person's angry. Right. And it's like, it starts to feel like if I'm going to engage with it more, it feels like therapy, right? It's life. It's all these things that are changing. So I've seen a lot of personal healing take place even throughout all the struggles we've been through. And I've seen a lot of collective healing trying to take place, taking place, and also sometimes getting stuck. So this is my sort of fun graph. Some of you are familiar with, and I think about half of you in here have taken my training, uh, my online training in yoga for trauma recovery. So this is a familiar graphic for you, the window of tolerance. But for those of you for whom this might be new, we're basically looking at how our nervous system responds to immediate threat, going into fight or flight, which is hyperarousal above the line, going into freeze, uh, which is hypoarousal below the line here. So it might be a new graphic for you, but I like to track through like, well, where was our system maybe before COVID collectively, right? And I don't even know if we were in our window of tolerance then when it hit in March 2020, right? But we're kind of like, do, 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 do. I think as Americans in particular, there's this fast paced, stressed out, uh, you know, go, go, go kind of culture. And we're definitely up. Maybe we're in our window of tolerance, but I would argue most of the time we're not in it, right? So we're kind of going along. And then this emergency comes up. Oh my God, there's a pandemic. 
And then we're told to stay home, right? So I don't know if you can see my cursor, but I'll kind of trace along. Then we're going down, down, down. And, and maybe we're in the window of tolerance for a moment. Oh, I'm finally getting sleep. Oh my gosh, this is so good. I'm going to bake bread and do fun things. And we're kind of hovering there for a second, getting the rest we need. And then, you know, come May 2020 and here in the States, there's George Floyd and people out in the streets and protesting and social justice things coming to the surface around police brutality and how do we govern ourselves and right how do we keep people safe and how do we make it clear that black lives are important and that they matter a lot going on so some action there right and then a little bit back down maybe find another hobby and then slowly I would say as we went into 2020 21 the more I've talked to people over time it's like I think people are really struggling with the opposite side at this point, still, even probably in 2023, 2021, 2022, I feel like, and that one on the right should say 2022, because I'm not predicting the future there, <laughs> but we're kind of just like, oh, like, how do I move through all of this? This is a lot. What do I do? How do I manage it? And so I've seen a lot more in my clients and myself and the world around me in conversations with clinicians, burnout, Zoom fatigue, fatigue in general right? Exhaustion, this like heavy sense of, okay, we just uprooted all this, all this challenge, all this traumatic material. And, and I don't know collectively if we quite have the tools um, to bring that collective feeling back up into a window of tolerance. I have faith we can get there. That's my vision. That's where I think we're going, right? Into this connection and and collaboration and communication and things that, that many of you put into the chat earlier in the Q&A box, right? So I think it's good to zoom out and sort of track where are we as a group? Because everyone might feel this a little bit differently, but culture really matters. And what people are thinking and feeling around you really matters. So take, for example, how you might feel going outside, let's just say to a coffee shop or something, on a Monday morning in your community, right? And what's the sense? What's in the air? Is there excitement? Maybe there's excitement for the coffee, right? Is there a sense of like, all right, let's get up and go? Is there a draggy feeling? What you're noticing around you is going to impact you. And maybe you even go to the coffee shop where it feels a little more upbeat, where there's music and they know your name or they know your order, right? Just to kind of get energy moving. And let's just contrast that to how you might feel on a holiday. Like think of a recent holiday, maybe New Year's Day. And everyone's maybe out on a hike with family or resting or watching a movie or just doing whatever. And notice how that impacts you, right? So what's happening around us is going to impact us, right? Our environment does have a strong impact, I would say. And I think it's important we acknowledge that because when we go, no, 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 I'm in control of everything and how I feel, then we're just disconnecting from that. We're not really able to work with it as much. So our collective nervous system, we're maybe having some challenges. So what I've been looking for organizationally, collectively, is like, where are we looping? And this is the same thing I would do. Some of you, um, are practitioners or have done in your own therapy, EMDR, uh, eye movement desensitization and reprocessing. So this is a trauma processing tool. And one of the most important things I think to look for in this process or in trauma processing is when something is just caught, right? We're in a cycle, make a little progress, slip back, same old thinking, same old results, same behavior, same challenges. We start to feel this sense of being stuck. So super important for us individually and collectively to look at like, where are we just doing the same thing, saying the same thing, losing energy around it? Again, if we are a little bit below the line, a little bit, you know, hypo aroused more than, more than activated and engaged as a collective right now, where is it, where are we stuck in that? So we're looking for looping. And in that looping, we wanna really differentiate this trauma vortex from the healing vortex. Now these vortices are not places you can visit in Sedona. <laughs> they are just like a, uh, what's the word, template or paradigm. They're like a paradigm for us to try to recognize, am I looping into this vortex of trauma where things are just getting more and more disrupted, dysregulated, chaotic, overwhelming, painful, 
Or am I in a place where maybe there are uncomfortable emotions, maybe there's difficulty, but there's a sense, like I mentioned earlier, of like, I cried and I felt better. I had a conversation, it was difficult, but there was some movement, there was some more understanding there. So it's super important and everything we've talked about so far we can use to help differentiate, well, am I in a trauma vortex or a healing vortex? And I'm gonna invite you right now just to use a simple sort of scan of your body and your day and your environment to notice maybe you're right in the middle. Maybe you can track when, you're, when your toe is getting caught in the trauma vortex. Maybe you can feel into that healing vortex where something shifts and then you get more energy and then you get a little um, inspiration, right? But if we can map, even in these sort of infinity yellow lines where we are. And if we can say, this is where I am, it truly is the first step, right? Awareness is the first step. And when we are in a trauma vortex, when we are cycling around and looping in the same problem or the same pain or the same behavior, or the same experience, like an enactment in life, well, we need usually a little help or support or momentum to get centered, and even to get into that side where healing is generative, right? So this is really talking about momentum to the momentum of these emotions, of these patterns in our bodies, of these experiences in our lives. So just how we started earlier, what does healing look like? What does it feel like, right? That can start to move us into just connecting with that healing vortex, right? Orienting to it, right? So if you have any questions, drop them in the chat. I'm going to keep going. These are some questions to ask. If you're in a place that feels confusing, muddled, challenging, sticky, what direction is this going in? It does it feel like this is, you know, you might have been in a fight or a conversation where you're like, this is not going to go well if we keep talking. So that could be an example of like a conflict, trauma vortex, right? One person's triggered, the other person's triggered, and it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger unless you sort of take a moment. <laughs> let's come back to this later in therapy, or let's come back to this tomorrow after we've slept or eaten, right? So is it getting worse or is it getting better? Those are, you know, subjective terms, but we have a sense. Am I making small steps towards this vision I have of healing, right? So if your vision of healing is um, a missionless airline travel, let's take something really tangible. Am I making small steps towards that by planting a tree, by investing in green energy? If your vision of healing is this relationship is solid, right? Am I taking small steps towards that? Am I being honest? Am I recognizing my feelings? If your vision of healing is um, collective social justice, what are the small steps, right? Because those are big things. And you can always ask, am I stuck refeeling the same thing across times and contexts? Because if that's the case, if it's the same, 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 it's going to start to feel stale. It's going to feel heavier. And that's a good place to really consciously start to build a bridge into the healing vortex. Yeah, you with me? Awesome. Okay, so what does it look like to make this shift, okay, to actually step from one vortex into the other? So aim for small positive shifts in your energy. Now, pretty much everyone here is going to be into moving your body or somatics, Tai Chi, yoga, meditation, all of these are wonderful skills to bring these small positive shifts in your energy. We start by building awareness. What am I feeling? Is there time? People mentioned rest and reflection. Is there time to even notice how I feel? Is there time to connect with, these are my thoughts right now. Affect, I mean, your emotions. Like, is there time to acknowledge that? And another thing to do, and, and you know, social media has these ways of giving us memories and things like that. And sometimes they're delightful. And sometimes you go, oh, wow, like I was really struggling in that moment. So you can look back, maybe even just in the last few years, at what you have shared with other people. That might be emails or texts or um, I don't know if you write letters anymore or if people save them. I actually found a letter from my best friend, Katrina Cockwell, some of you know her. Um, from fourth grade, when I was cleaning out the Christmas bins, I found it, actually kept it, I kept it in the Christmas bin. So look back at like, what was happening at this point in my life? How was I feeling? We can track awareness 
of where we've been and we can then go, huh, is that, is that connected to this vision I have? Another important thing, and you know, many of you in here teach and practice cultivating a dynamic nervous system. Now, this isn't just about being a flat line in the middle of window tolerance. This isn't about never getting triggered or never being hyper or hypo aroused. It's about building skills and identifying specific tools that bring you into a window of tolerance, a sense of most importantly, I think a sense of, I can cope with this. I can use these tools. I can go to therapy. I can go for a walk in nature. I can snuggle my puppies. I can take a break and shut down my computer. I can rest. Um, I can be joyful amidst this process of collective healing that we're in, right? So examples of that, your yoga practice, simple breathing, right? Many of you know whether you're focusing on your inhale or focusing on your exhale can create a, a subtle shift. Most of all, just invest in and understand how these different states in our nervous system are gonna set the stage for behavior, right? So if you are hyper aroused and like, God, I'm running late and I really gotta get there, it's hard to, it might be hard, it's possible, it might be hard to access their love and respect myself, right? It might be hard to access a thought or a bridge or something that's helpful for you in that moment. So our bodies, and this is where somatic and body-based therapies, I feel like are so important. Our bodies can really set the stage for a lot of what we're thinking and feeling. So we've got to really pay attention to that. And then just noticing what are your go-to responses? Do you go hyper and get agitated, angry? Do you go hypo and withdraw and dissociate or feel really depressed? There's no judgment on these really. And I know there's a lot of judgment mixed in when we start talking about mental health um, terms and words and you know things we may or may not want to identify with, but just, I love the biology of it because we can just go, am I up or down? Am I, right? Like what's going on here and what's the biological basis for this? And what are my go-tos, right? And the more we can understand our go-tos, the better. And this can be with the help of you know, reflection in relationships, therapy, all those things. We start to cultivate a dynamic nervous system and really just connect with what is true. And I think what is true here collectively, there's been a lot of loss collectively across the world. There's been a lot of fear, fear of just getting sick or getting a loved one sick. There's been a lot of anger around things that have been rightfully or not rightfully have been unjust. There's rightful anger about what has been unjust. There's been withdrawal, like I just can't even handle this, you know? And I think it's fine and healthy to set boundaries, but withdrawal tends to also feel um, perhaps a little disempowering as well. And there's been conflict, right? Lots of opinions out there. There's a saying, I've had this thought, this is funny. Hopefully you think it's funny too. I'm going to say a swear word. So if you have kids around, uh, you can cover their ears. <laughs> um, people say, um, people have this saying like, opinions are like assholes. Everybody has one or something. I'm like, no, everyone has way more than one. So that is not accurate. There's so many opinions. It's hard to feel connected around a thought with folks when there's a lot of emotional energy and there's a lot of opinions out there. So how do we then reconnect with a path of healing if it's true that we've been navigating all this trauma, right? If there's a feeling of loss, we could reconnect with love, even love of the person or people lost. If there's a feeling of fear, we can connect with courage. If there's anger, we can connect with action, withdrawal, connection, conflict, reconciliation. So again, it's just seeing the other side. And these aren't hard and fast. The opposite of loss is love, right? I'm just offering some suggestions around if we're feeling, if the truth of something painful is there, right? We start with that, connect with it, honor it recognize it and then go, well, where can we go with this? And what emotion or what theme or feeling might help us move through this might be a goal. So we're not losing sight of some sort of possibility there. Yeah. Cause then energy flows, right. When we have some kind of possibility. So I'm already over my 45 minute time. See, I planned well, so we'll end before the hour. The last thing is just to lead. And this might be a really hard ask for some of you. Now, I know for myself, 
just in the different leadership positions I've been in, like leadership is challenging. I remember someone, I can't remember who it was, talking about just the weight of decision making. It was like a president or maybe it was Brene Brown. I don't know. It was somebody talking about just the weight of decision making. And being in a leadership position often means we need to make decisions. Now, for some of us, that's a strength. For some of us, that's a challenge. I think for most of us, making decisions and carrying responsibility, yeah, there's like this, I want to do the right thing. There's no clear cut right answer. You know, either way, there's complications. That can just start to feel like a lot that we're carrying. But I'm going to encourage you to make decisions that are oriented to your experience of that vision of healing, to your desire for a certain emotion or experience more in the world. And this takes centering ourselves. And this is something we talk about a lot. There's a lot of simple practices. You put your hand on your heart, you put your hand on your belly, but it's a big deal, right? To feel centered um, can be challenging. So I feel like these are out of order. So there we go. So in terms of centering yourself, say yes to self-care, rest, boundaries, support, community connections, all those things that just sort of keep us going if we're feeling exhausted or deflated or challenged or in the muck of a decision, right? Now, if there's a trauma related, right? And if and if trauma is, is sort of deducing down to this fear, death or harm or violence, well, again, let's look at the opposite. What's what connects us to growth? What connects us to care? So if you're getting mired in a conversation or a decision that's, or a process as a trauma therapist that's around trauma, you can really stand in. And we don't have time for it today, but I've done some exercises where you actually draw, like what does growth look like on a piece of paper and stand in it? What does care look like? Stand in it, right? If we can step into that, we're centering ourselves in something that feels better biologically, emotionally, and helps us go like lead by that choice. So when you're centered in that clarity of your vision, you can lead the way through these collective challenges in small ways, right? We don't have to be president of a country or an organization or anything. We can be a leader in our family, be a leader in a conversation, in a specific relationship, or just within the energy of our own day. So I'd encourage you to keep coming back and reconnecting with your vision. What does it look, feel, smell, taste like for this to be healed? Um, and that might be a little bit easier to connect with when it's a smaller scope of trauma, right? A really um, common sort of quote unquote simple PTSD, someone's in a car accident or something, it's horrific, but it's a small amount of time. What does it look like for this to be healed? Whiplash is over. I don't feel, you know, I feel comfortable driving. Very tangible, right? Um, some of the stuff we're in is really big. So we can take a piece of it if that's the case. Okay, well, what would it just look like to feel better within this one relationship or within the workplace or for this one decision to be resolved? So depending on how you are, I know I'm the sort of eagle eye perspective. I like to see really big pictures and the smaller is harder. You might be similar or the opposite or anywhere in between and around. But taking a little piece can sometimes just feel more manageable. And just return to your anchors. Hopefully you found one from earlier. Connection, compassion, uh, unity, something that you can come back to and just compare and contrast. Does this decision, if I'm in a leadership position in my family or in this conversation, does this choice, maybe your anchor is the needs to honor my needs. Maybe the anchor is respect the environment. I mentioned earlier with ISSTD, does this, uh, is this in the best interest of the organization, right? So any anchor you can come back to, um, is this going to to lead towards reconciliation, things like that. And you can use those anchors when you're making tough decisions. And I encourage you to, in a paced way, when you're rested, come back to those moments of grit and those hard conversations or those emails you don't want to respond to. Give yourself the space to do what we've done throughout this talk, right? Throughout this discussion of go through things, but then come back to it. And, and because when we can face those gritty moments with some skill and with some tools and with some support and centering within ourselves, that's when we start to feel more that healing vortex, right? That 
regeneration or that sense of generativity of, okay, we're moving forward and moving through this. I don't know how y'all do the little hearts and emojis, but I love it. <laughs> I love that. Yay. Yay. I'm so glad to see you. So last thing is just to communicate these choices with care, with compassion, right? Those are other anchors we can come back to in our communication. And there's a whole more, we, a lot more we could say about this, but it's just helpful again to anchor there. And as much as we might want to withdraw or hide or wait for everything to pass, as much as you can, include other people. You know, I learned this as president of like, if I just know something, but no one else is in on it, it's, it's not really helpful for the organization. So can I include other people in how I'm thinking or in, you know, just the fact that something's happening um, and share, right? Orient to that healing and share that feeling, share those behaviors with others. So it can be easy to vent and I, I support venting 100%. It can be easy to go, oh, it's so rough. Yes, it's so hard. Oh, I'm so tired. Yes. Can we include in those conversations? I have this feeling. If it's true for you, this is true for me. I have this feeling that something better is coming. I have this feeling that there's something good that can come out of this. And if you know what that looks like, and this is what it looks like, and spelling that out. Right. And that might take some courage. That might take some time. Totally fine. But this is the way we lead in small ways, even dropping things into a conversation with a friend or a colleague or a loved one. And then just rinse and repeat. I don't know if any of you used to watch Airplane. My family watched it. Airplane, the movie uh, with Leslie Nielsen and some other actors. We watched it on repeat growing up. And there's this part where the shit hits the fan. Sorry, I'm swearing again. Well, we're processing a lot. It's going to keep happening. I wish I could say it's not. But when it hits the fan, you know, cultivate a dynamic nervous system, I would say, instead of keep calm. When it hits the fan, cultivate a dynamic nervous system and come back to some of these practices, whatever you might have found helpful today um, to rinse and repeat. All right. So we covered a lot. Three steps, right? And kind of go back and we're talking about differentiating the healing vortex, cultivating a dynamic nervous system, moving forward and just choosing to lead even in small ways. Yeah. So that's what we covered and I hope you have enjoyed. I've got some other resources for you if you're into these types of healing conversations, if you're like me and you like thinking about this stuff. Please check out the How We Can Heal podcast if you haven't already. I loved, love, love season one and season two, and I'm working on season three right now. So it'll be out this year. Uh, more details to come. If you're on my email list, you can sign up at howwecanheal.com to get details about that. I'm trying to be better about social media, but like I said, sometimes I log in and I'm like, no, I'm done for the day. So uh, I'm trying to be better about sharing this stuff there as well. So you can go to howwecanheal.com. There's also a resources tab with lots of great stuff there that I want to beef up. I have some more ideas for things to go there. We also have a seven trauma-informed practices series. Uh, I don't think I can drop this into the chat. So I'll send a follow-up email with the recording. And if you haven't um, been through this already, I think it's great. We used it in the beginning of the podcast to launch the podcast and just offer it in an ongoing way. Um, some nice, simple things you can do to support yourself and those around you through tough times. And now it's time. Oh my goodness, the stack of books over here is too large. Okay, one of my books is back here. There they are. <laughs> I can't hold one up right now because there's too much other stuff. Uh, so these are my three books, Embodied Healing. Um, I don't have in print anymore. Um, so I think you can get it on Amazon if you want to. It's a good, simple, loving overview of some of my work. An earlier, um, earlier iteration, it published in 2015. How You Can Heal is a Strength-Based guide, strength guide to Trauma Recovery. It's really all about resourcing. So if you haven't read that, I think now, <laughs> the last few years and now are a great time to read it. Um, and Yoga for Trauma Recovery, which is really great if you are super interested in sharing this type of work with others. So I'm going to give away a copy of Yoga for Trauma Recovery to the third person to put their name and email in the chat. So you got to put your email so I can follow up and send you the copy. So I'll give you a second to put that in. And then if you would like a copy of How You Can Heal, the middle one, I'll send you a PDF copy for everyone who puts their um, email address in the chat. 
Okay, uno, dos, Carrie Zellman, congratulations. I'm gonna send you a copy of Yoga for Trauma Recovery. And everyone, because I, I just, whenever I go into a raffle, I always wanna win, we all wanna win. Okay, so everyone wins a copy of how you can heal. And I will email that to you with the recording uh, um, to this. Within about 24 hours, you should get that. Okay, so thanks for all, I love seeing your names. So glad you're here. Yeah, chat is disabled. Sorry, I keep saying chat. Q&A. Put it in the Q&A. Yay, congratulations, Carrie. You're welcome, Lisa. And I saw another question here, and I think we have like a minute or two for a question. I'll take a look at that. But before I do that, I just want to remind you to come back to growth and care, come back to just rest and regeneration and any amount of energy of inspiration, whether it's the way the lemons look on the tree after a rainstorm or you know expressing a need there's a lot of ways we can care for ourselves and each other so encourage you to come back to care and yeah we get time for about a question I like to close too with just thanking you for your interest and your commitment to healing in so many ways I know so many of you are doing super 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 important work and maybe you know it's not televised it's not on it's not on um tv necessarily so Thank you for, for everything you do. I truly appreciate that you exist and you're doing this. So that's that. And I'm going to turn it over to the question I'm going to have to scroll back to. Hi, full face. Thank you so much for being here. It's 11.58. Just want to acknowledge at some point during this call, it was 11, 11 on 11 and I wanted to notice it. I forgot. <laughs> so maybe some of you did. Okay, so thanks everyone for being here and hope you have a beautiful day. If you have um, a question, you can pop it in the chat. Oh, how do I heal when medically someone's getting worse? Oh, that is rough. Uh, rhetorical question. <laughs> it is a lot to handle. So I would say in response to this question, when you're in a situation, it's almost like it's the trauma is still happening, right? So how do you heal as much as you can connect with what you're feeling, get support through what you're feeling? because it might be some healing processes are long. I think we're amidst a number of healing processes that are not, they're not gonna happen in a day. So I would think about trauma vortex, healing vortex. And I would maybe think about it like cultivating, building a healing vortex for yourself for now and for later. So if you're in this really you know, traumatic situation where um, yeah, there's a lot, and you put some details in here of the health stuff, it's, getting worse. Um, and that could be really draining. So how can you get some emotional support for yourself? Even really simple things. And I know this might feel so small in the face of it, but like I mentioned, you know, putting on my favorite sweater or making a cup of tea or like just taking a minute, like we did earlier with the song you couldn't hear, taking a minute to just, um, you know, maybe if you're a meditator or visual, visual person, visualizing light filling you visualizing love around you as a caregiver those are the things that I would I would recommend so I hope I hope that's helpful all right thanks everybody it's 12 and I know you might have places to go so I'll send out the recording thank you so much for being here oh here come the puppies okay all right if you got a second boomy do you want to say hi do you want to say hi Oh yeah, there's Boomy Bear, Buddy Boy Boomy Bear on Instagram. He posts once a month ish. Hi, Miss. You wanna come say hi? Who's puppy pants? Who's got puppy pants on? Iris Jacks. Who can come here? Oh yeah. All right, y'all. Have a beautiful day. Thanks for being here. Bye.